Well, the first thing we need to do when we're talking about candlesticks is understanding what they're trying to tell us, right? They're trying to tell us something. And so we need to be able to interpret what the candlestick is, uh, price bar is trying to tell us. If you look at this example here, we have a red one and, and a white one. And uh, these candlesticks are trying to tell us something about the pricing, the range of prices, the opening and the close, whether it was up or down. Uh, but we need to learn how that works. But you can kind of see just looking at these two examples that the candlestick bars get their price bars, get their name because they look like candles, right? You have a body that looks like a candle, the main body, and you have a wick on top. And this, and also with candles, candlesticks and technical analysis and pricing, you have a wick on the bottom too. And they can vary in different lengths and all that, as you'll see. But that's the idea is they kind of look like a candlestick uh, or, you know, which is, or a candle, which is great. Now let's, what's it telling us though? This is great, Steve looks nice, but give us a little bit more so we can understand what this means. So when we look at these two here, and now we're gonna look at how to interpret them, right? So what is this telling us? So let's start with the one on the left. Um, and, or actually let's start in the middle here. Where you look in the middle where it says upper shadow, real body, and lower shadow. So all candlesticks share these upper shadows, real bodies, and lower shadows. Some are different lengths, of course, but in these two, they're exactly the same lengths on all these. The upper shadow is basically that straight line that you see on both of them going up and down. The real body is the, is the rectangle, the kind of the body of the candle, and the lower shadow would be like the wick on the bottom part of the candle. So you have an upper wick and a lower wick and a body. Again, they, you'll see though, they can vary in size as far as you know, height and all that. So now if we look at the candle on the left, the red one, you can see that the high of the prices of the day is at the top of the wick, at the top of the upper shadow. So that's telling us in this price range that that would be the absolute high that the, that the security traded during the day. If you jump down to the low at the very bottom, you can see the other wick where it goes down towards the bottom. That would be the absolute low in terms of prices when you see these on a chart you'll see the different prices and things, and you'll see all these candlesticks, and you'll see their highs and lows based on the wicks, the upper shadow and the lower shadow. Now the body itself tells you something. So the one on the left, you can see at the very top of the rectangle, at the top of the body, that's the opening price. So that line, that horizontal line would represent what the uh, price was at the opening of the trading day. At the bottom of the rectangle on this one, it would show you the closing price at the end of the day. What is the closing price? And then the color of the candlestick actually has meaning so you can instantly see, did the open occur, uh, did the close occur higher or lower than the opening? You can see this one being red on the left there is a down day, prices went down. So the prices opened higher, but at the end of the day when the prices closed, they closed lower. So just by looking at the candlestick color, you can see, ah, red, down day, right? So I know my open is lower than my close and my wicks tell me my high and low. The same thing on the right-hand side with the green one, the difference is, is that the close was higher than the open. You probably see that on the real body. The top represents the highest price or the closing price, which is lower, or excuse me, higher than what it opened at. So it opened at where the open price is there and then it had a range of highs and lows but then it finished the day at higher. So the way you can tell that instantly is you can see that the body is filled in with either white or a different color, for example. So I know if I see a red body in this example, I know my I had a down day, right? It opened and then closed lower. If I see it's a white body, I instantly know in a pattern of, of these candlesticks over several days that this one was one where it closed up higher than it opened. It may seem a little confusing at first, but it's it's not too bad. You'll, you'll get the hang of it here real quickly. If we look at, uh, uh, let's say if something is bullish, as in the prices go higher, you can see again, here's that representation of the open being lower and the close being higher. Bearish would be where the candlestick is, you know, typically red in color uh, and it would show a opening higher, but then a closing lower. So it's a bearish or decreasing type of candlestick. And these candlesticks can be, you know, green and white would re might represent bullish, red and black would represent um, you know, a bearish one, depending on the price charts you're using, the platform you're using. And the open and the close depends on the color. You know, it'll be at the top and the bottom of the box, and that'll indicate the color depending on what happens. But your lows and your highs will always stay the same. Your high will always be the top wick, and your low will always be the bottom wick as far as the price ranges. Here's an example of the same exact uh, security shows you the same period what it would look like as far as with an open high low close bars 
versus let's say candlestick bars. And you can kind of see they look similar, but they also look different too. And uh, as far as what you can get from them. Now, one thing with candlestick bars is there's things that can be indicated that give you more information within a pattern or the shape of the candle itself. Here's a closer look at the candlestick bar chart as an example. And you can start seeing that they have these different heights, right? See how some are really kind of squat, you know, short and squat, and some are real long. Some have real long wicks at the top. Some have no wicks at the top or very little and long wicks at the bottom, no wicks at the top. In fact, you can see these one here over on the far left. Do you see some in the far left? Um, you know, after the long, you know, kind of in between where it starts to rise up a little bit at the first part, you might see a candlestick that has a very long top, but not much for difference between open and close. So it has a very small, almost like a line across for a body. And that's actually called a doji. You know, that, and there's actually things we trade around. That's a, a candlestick with little or no body, and it's a special case. And it's where the open and close are occurring at or near you know, the bottom. If it happens near the bottom, it's a gravestone doji. This is an example of a gravestone doji where it's occurring more towards the bottom. It'd be a different name if the same thing happened but occurred at the top, open and close were near the top. So we're going to learn all about dojis here coming up because they're very important in terms of you know, recognizing a trading opportunity. But the real takeaway from that is to understand that these candlesticks can have different shapes and they're trying to tell you something. When you look at them both within their own individual candlesticks, but also when we start looking at patterns of candlesticks coming up, they're going to give us a lot of trading information. And some people, all they do is trade off of candlesticks. That's all they focus on is candlesticks. Uh, I like you can use them and then use other indicators with them as well. I think is very powerful. But a lot of people, they just love candlesticks in these different patterns and it works well for them.